It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And it is the end of day five in Santee and what a day it has been. Oh my gosh, we are completely done with the planting. We uh, are completely done staging boulders and uh, red and black lava rock. And daddy is in the process of staging all of the exterior illuminance and Miguel and many other crew members are burying electrical lines right now. Today we also managed to get all of the irrigation lines buried. Uh, so today is go or tomorrow we will pick up um, basically where we're leaving off here today with more burying of lines and spreading of rock. Yeah, we also have a couple of baskets of rubble and so we will be shoring up areas of the landscape where it's a little steep. Remember, the rock that we're going to use is a 3 8 inch chamois base. So if you've got really steep areas, you don't want all the rock falling off the hill. So by using rubble, you can actually use it for retention. Not only does it look beautiful, um, but it acts as a way of keeping the rock in place. There, we also got that really cool angustifolia. Oh my gosh, yes. And thank you so much to John and Chris and our, our wonderful, generous followers that are forever and always bequeathing us with these beautiful, mature plants out of their own personal collection. This is a very mature agave angustifolia, and it absolutely is owning that corner at the end of the barrel colony. The guys also got started with the spreading of the chamois beige. Doesn't that look so beautiful? I love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right. So we've got Mel throwing down our pre-emergent. This will help control weeds. This is a very, very large garden space. So we need all the help we can get. We wanted to uh, get this done the end of business today before we start with our formal rocking tomorrow. Also today, Hannah and Kevin and Mel, I think everybody kind of had touched this, but we got the flagstone laid down. These uh, still have to be adjusted, a little bit shimmied. We've got some decomposed granite or sand that we can put underneath ones that might be a little wobbly, although these are really thick patio grade flagstones, so they don't really wobble a lot. Um, and if they're stable, no sand needed, we will just rock in between. Oh, here we go. See this? So this one will get a little sand and that'll stabilize it. And then we'll just throw the 3 8 inch rock in between the joints and it'll be a beautiful organically placed flagstone path. Uh, Greg is going to pick up a few more pieces of flagstone tomorrow so that we can create a little bit more movement in the path. It feels just a little bit straight in places and we really want it to move. So a few more pieces will be brought in, uh, but this is for the most part done. You can see no irrigation lines. We got all of that done today. This beautiful Cameronii, Aloe Cameronii, was also a gift from the Gleasons along with the two Angustifolias, so thank you for that. She's magnificent right there. Also, uh, you will note that we moved one of the Dazzlerians. Um, once we put the Angustifolia in the back, I didn't like the way the Dazzlerian looked, so it got moved into the garden proper. I know, we'll get, we'll get over there. The fountain is functional. Greg has adjusted the flow. Uh, the client is happy with it, so we will be doing a beautiful rock top dressing on top of this basin and this area is just going to absolutely come alive when all of the rock gets staged. I want to do a lot of rubble throughout this area where we did tapestry. That's going to make such a big difference. In the grand reveal tomorrow, be sure and pay attention and note the how finished it looks. You know, see like for example, this little tapestry area right here is gonna benefit so much from some of those beautiful pieces of rubble just tucked up and around. It just adds so much more depth and it makes the garden look so much more finished. I don't know how else to say it, but don't skimp on your rubble. We were really taking advantage of the exposures in this garden 
and the microclimates as best we could because this is Lakeside, California, which is inland San Diego County, and it can get quite warm here in the summertime. So we've got some dry garden areas up here on this mound, and the tapestries aren't they're, they're brush strokes. They're not all connected. I didn't want to go overboard with the soft plants in the event that some of them might struggle in the heat. This area of the garden does get quite shaded in the afternoon, so I'm confident we're going to be okay. But until I know for sure, you know, I just always err on the side of caution when I'm working in a new landscape. This side over here gets hammered with sun. So this is our dry garden. And I have, you know, just cactus and a Dracaena draco. Um, just, you know, just very minimalistic over here. This is the spot where we had the Dazzlerian longissimum. And we had originally thought we would put the Angustifolia back here. But it, and we tried it, but it was just too much of this. Too much, too much, too much floof. So... This took the place of the Dazzlerian longissimum at the end of the garden. Super happy with this. I staged a little brass uh, bird bath that belonged to the client. And also one of her dear friends made her that little terracotta strawberry pot. So I got that staged in the tapestry area. And they're, you know, there's just some little starting to starting to bring out and getting excited and bringing out some little fun things that are special and sentimental to her that I can stage in the garden areas. Our uh, client's husband really loves roses, so he has his little rose garden back here. This is his area, and he is going to be fixing this up. Uh, so we will be taking our top dressing rock and basically just finishing all the way around to the edge back there and in front of the roses. We'll be taking some of that rubble and doing some dry stack where it gets really, really steep in front of the rosemary here and we'll kind of connect it, we'll connect to the fence. So this'll, this'll all be framed. It'll be really, really pretty. I will, or I, Greg's bringing me a yard of burgundy three quarter inch. So I'm gonna be careful to where I do my burgundy brush strokes on top of my chamois beige because we do have eucalypt, eucalyptus trees framing this property. And we've got what I call these weed trees over here that throw detritus. Uh, we do have a crepe myrtle out front. So I'm gonna be also thinking about that as I go and minimizing the risk of having a lot of detritus falling on that darker top dressing, which of course would just look like a dirty carpet all the time. So there's just a lot, guys, there's a lot. Will we, will we finish tomorrow? That is the question. We've got eight to 10 yards of top dressing to spread, plus a yard of uh, accent burgundy. I've got two baskets, which is about two ton of rubble to move through the garden. We have, Greg still has to attach lights. We have all the electrical cord to bury. We have pots to plant, um, a driveway to power wash, and of course, all of the cleanup. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Do you think we're gonna make it tomorrow or are we gonna need an extra day? At any rate, thank you all so much for following, for watching. Uh, for your for your kind and um, insightful comments. This has been Laura Eubanks reporting for Team DFS in Santee, California with day five of what we hope will be a six day and your succulent tip of the day. Bye guys.